I'm Adam Pena from the Technical Product Marketing Team here at Soligo. Today, I'll demonstrate how you can use the Google Sheets connector to make your spreadsheets a dynamic part of your integration strategy. I'll be showing you two flows that solve a real-life problem involving a Google Sheet. Here's our scenario. Let's say you're a business development representative who will be attending a customer conference. You and your team have been given access to a shared Google spreadsheet that will be used to track the current information on customers and prospects at the conference. Your mission is to meet and capture new information for each of these attendees in a spreadsheet and have that information sync back to your business applications. We'll start by looking at the Salesforce attendees to conference spreadsheet flow. This flow will export information on, it, on attendees in Salesforce and import their details as rows in our spreadsheet. Here's the campaign we created to track the event. You can see that there are 55 campaign members that have been added to this campaign. That means there are 55 known attendees to the conference. Most of these attendees are leads, but you can see that some of them are contacts. Information on each of these attendees will travel through this first step of the flow. The second step is a Google Sheets import. This step will import all the information on each of these attendees into a spreadsheet. Since this flow is going to do most of its work as a one-time sync, the spreadsheet we'll use is initially empty, except for the first row which will contain column headers. Since each row of this spreadsheet will represent a record, you can think of these column names as fields for the records that you can map to. For example, you could map the name of an attendee, the first and last name, their title, their email. We also have a couple of columns that will hold the IDs. These are useful for matching records between Salesforce and this spreadsheet to handle updates and to avoid creating duplicate records. This sheet's import will add and update records in the spreadsheet using the information from Salesforce. When you're making an add update step for sheets, it's strongly advised that you use one of Soligo's pre-built template flows to get started. I'll rebuild this step from scratch to show you how you can use a template flow and how to create a sheets connection. I'll start by selecting the application of my choice. In this case, Google Sheets. Next, I'll select what I'd like to do with Google Sheets. The goal is to import the records coming out from Salesforce into our spreadsheet, so I'll select Import Records into Destination Application. Before I create this flow step, notice that I get recommendations for steps I created previously for this application. Below that are pre-built flows from the Soligo Marketplace, ordered by how relevant they are to what I've selected so far. The Update Existing Rows and Append New Rows template is where I started to build this step. I'll download this step as a starting point and move on to the configuration. Aside from choosing a more relevant name for the step, creating a Google Sheets connection is the most important place to start. I'll demonstrate that process now. So I'll start by naming my connection. Once you've named your connection, you'll want to hit this button here to configure the scopes. The scopes can be thought of as what you want your connection to do. It's generally a best practice to limit your scopes to do only what they need to do. A Google Sheets connection offers two scopes. The one marked Read Only does exactly what you would expect. It only allows you to read values from your spreadsheet. The other scope allows you to both read and write. Since we need to write values into the spreadsheet for this flow, we'll select this scope. We'll then use this button here to move that scope over to the right side where our selected scopes go. Now we'll save our scopes configuration, save and authorize this connection, and select the account that we want to connect to. Finally, we'll allow the permissions the integrator needs to adjust our sheets environment and our connection is online and ready to go. Next, we'll configure the fields under the Settings tab. This flow step needs the spreadsheet ID in order to know specifically which spreadsheet to access. The help bubble for this field tells you that you can find the ID in the URL of your spreadsheet. So I'll go to my spreadsheet and copy that segment out from the URL. You can see I have it selected here, right after this slash d slash.
Next, we'll need to enter the sheet name. Your project may have multiple sheets, named sheets, or both. You can see the name of your spreadsheet in the bottom left. You can see that my spreadsheet is named Sheet 1, the default name given to the first sheet you create in a, in a sheets project. So I'll enter the name of that sheet here in single quotes. Next, this checkbox is very important and can simplify a lot of your work. If your spreadsheet has headers, like all good spreadsheets do, activate this checkbox. The headers will be automatically read from the first row of your spreadsheet after you save this step and populate in this field here. The final two fields are used to find existing records. By finding existing records, the flow can intelligently decide to update a record if information has changed or ignore the creation of duplicate records. In the column to find existing rows field, we'll enter the header name of the field that we want to match with. We'll use the email column from our spreadsheet. Now we select the source record field that will match with the email column in our spreadsheet. Remember that our source in this case is Salesforce. So, we'll match the email of each campaign member coming out from Salesforce to the email of an existing record in our spreadsheet. If the email of one of those campaign members matches the email of a row in the spreadsheet, we know that this record corresponds to a pre-existing row and we'll check for an update. If there have been no changes, the record will have no effect on the spreadsheet. So that's it for the configuration. I'll show you the actual step now. Before we take a quick look at the import mapping with this sheets import, we'll note that this step features a hook. This came included with the template. The template contains two pre-written scripts that are included to ensure that your ads and updates work as you would expect. This significantly reduces the time it would take to develop a step like this from scratch. So, when you need to import information into a spreadsheet with your integrations, this template is strongly recommended. Now let's open up the mapping configuration of this step. If you've used headers and correctly activated the headers checkbox from earlier, you can see that mapping is very simple. You use the column names exactly as they are written in Google Sheets. With the mapping and configuration of this step complete, we're ready to run this flow. I'll hit the run button and then go over to Google Sheets. What's fun about Google Sheets is you can watch the updates in real time. So now our spreadsheet is filled out and ready for the conference. We'll move on to the second flow, which will write what we input into the spreadsheet back into Salesforce. Let's take a look at the second flow in our integration. Additions to the spreadsheet will be handled by this flow. For example, if we meet a new prospect or a contact for an existing account at the conference that wasn't previously added to the campaign, we can enter their information into the spreadsheet as needed. We can then run this flow at the end of the day to add these new prospects and customers to the campaign in Salesforce. This will also allow updates to the spreadsheet to populate. For example, any new notes we add to prospects will also be reflected in Salesforce when this flow runs. Let's hone in on the initial Google Sheets export. Once again, a template flow was used to get started. I'll demonstrate the process of how I created this step. There's only one thing we can do with a Sheets export, so the What Would You Like To Do field is filled in for us. If I scroll down to Marketplace Flow Steps, you can see that a Sheets export step is recommended. The read all data from spreadsheet template step was used for this flow. It'll save you a little bit of time for the use case that you need to read data from a spreadsheet. We'll select this step and move on to the configuration. Let's look at the complete configuration of this step. Naming aside, we also need to supply a connection. As mentioned earlier, we can reuse the same connection. Now we have a couple of new fields resource and API endpoint. Resource can be thought of as the broader set of records that we want to deal with in Sheets. We have three resources that we can choose from. The spreadsheets resource deals with spreadsheets as a whole. When exporting with this resource, you can retrieve metadata like the name of the spreadsheet, 
colors used for various cells, formatting information, and more. Spreadsheets.developer metadata deals with metadata in spreadsheets that has been annotated in specifically by Sheets developers. The most commonly used resource is Spreadsheets.values. Spreadsheets.values will allow you to access the values within your spreadsheet. I'll select this resource since we want to retrieve every row of the spreadsheet. Next, depending on the selected resource, you'll be presented with different API endpoints. These can be thought of as answering what you would like to do specifically with your selected resource. In this case, what would we like to do with the values in our selected spreadsheet? BatchGet will allow us to make multiple specific selections in various ranges. BatchGet by data filter will allow us to define rules for the selections we make. Meanwhile, Get will simply select everything in the specified range, which we'll go over later. Now we still need the spreadsheet ID, and we still have a headers checkbox, which functions a lot like the one we used earlier. We'll make sure that this is active since we know our spreadsheet has column headers. Finally, in the range box, you can use Google Sheets' A1 notation to select specific ranges, or you can simply supply the name of the spreadsheet that you want to use in order to select all the values. As we went over earlier, our spreadsheet is named by the default name, Sheet1. With the configuration complete, we'll hit preview and examine the data. We can see that the data is very neatly organized. Each row becomes a record. Thanks to the checkbox, each field is named according to the column headers. Now that we fully understand this step, we'll test this flow out. So as a review, here's our Salesforce campaign. We should expect to see this number go up as we add the records that I've put into the spreadsheet. So we should expect to see each of these prospects become a campaign member and see that number go up when you run this. As a finishing touch, you can see that we don't have any IDs here. I've gone to settings and chained the other flow we went over to run immediately after this one. That way, once these records are added to Salesforce, the first flow we went over will run, will match on their email addresses, and will refresh these ID records. So let's give this flow a run, and we'll return to Google Sheets, and then by the time we see these IDs populate in, we'll know that both flows have finished running. So now those IDs have come through, we should be able to go to Salesforce and refresh this campaign page and see that our campaign members number has gone up. We can see that the three new campaign members have been added to the campaign corresponding to our conference. Here are the three records we had previously in our spreadsheet. We can schedule this flow to run every night so that after each day of the conference, our spreadsheet and our CRM are up to speed and in sync. Both of our flows work as expected and are ready for the conference. Hopefully this deeper look into how the Google Sheets connector works has shown you that integrating with spreadsheets can be quick and easy, especially if you take advantage of template flows.